For this class, we will be using C++. You may have used another language in the past, so let's introduce this language briefly, and then we'll also talk about terms you will want to know and assignment tips. C++ is a general-purpose programming language. It has imperative, object-oriented, and generic programming features, while also providing facilities for low-level memory manipulation. All of this might not mean anything to you at the moment, but over the course of the class, you will get to learn about object-oriented programming, as well as memory management. As for the other programming features listed, just keep in mind that there are different styles of programming, and C++ tries to be pretty flexible in letting the programmer write code in the style that they prefer. C++ was invented by Bjarne Strusup in 1979. It was originally called C with classes. C++ is built on top of the C language. One of the handy features of C++ is that you can use almost any library written for C in a C++ project. A library is basically code that somebody has written for reuse. For example, a popular cross-platform game programming library is SDL, which allows users to load and handle images and audio, handle input, and other handy things that you might not want to program from scratch. C++ is standardized by the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO. Nobody owns C++, like with Java and C Sharp, where Java is owned by Oracle currently, and C Sharp is owned and created by Microsoft. The C++ 98 version of C++ is widely used, though C++ 11 has added many new features. Here are some interesting notes from the list of C++ philosophy rules from Wikipedia. Every feature should be implementable, with a reasonably obvious way to do so. Programmers should be free to pick their own programming style, and that style should be fully supported by C++. Allowing a useful feature is more important than preventing every possible misuse of C++. C++ should work alongside other existing programming languages, rather than fostering its own separate and incompatible programming environment. And there are more, and you can view them at Wikipedia if you'd like. A popular quote about C++ was said by its creator. He said, C makes it easy to shoot yourself in the foot. C++ makes it harder, but when you do, it blows your whole leg off. Various programming languages have various capabilities, and C++ doesn't protect you from making mistakes or bad decisions. With memory management, for example, you can easily create a memory leak and use up all of the memory on your computer. The only way to fix it would be to restart your machine. Okay, now a little bit about programming in general. A low-level programming language is a language closer to the machine. Low-level means that there is little abstraction between the language and the resulting machine code or assembly code. A low-level programming language is a language closer to the machine. Low-level means that there is little abstraction between the language and the resulting machine code or assembly code. Think of abstraction like adding on layers of code to make things less machine-like and more human-like, or human-readable. Here's another example of some assembly code. The pound signs are for comments, telling you what each line does. A high-level programming language abstracts away a lot of the details of the computer. Generally, these languages are easier to use, and you can build more complex software more quickly. Machine code and assembly are low-level languages. C++ is kind of in-between. It was originally considered high-level, but now that there are languages that are even more high-level, it makes C++ look low-level. C Sharp, Java, and Python are higher level than C++. We are going to be utilizing a compiler, linker, and IDE in this class. Here's what these things are. C++ uses a compiler. A compiler is a program that converts code, such as C++ code, into machine language. The output is a binary file, executable, library, or other. We can write C++ code in any text editor. We just need a compiler to turn it into an application. Here, I've used the G++ compiler to compile my Hello World source code into a program. We won't be using the command line to compile our programs in this class, but it is important to know that the compiler is part of our development environment. An IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, is a software application that usually combines your text editor with syntax highlighting, compiler, debugging tools, project management, and perhaps other features. This is what the CodeBlocks IDE looks like. I have a code window, and I can build my program from within code blocks. It gives me a status window below my code that tells me whether the compilation process succeeded or failed. It also has debugging tools and a project manager. 
Visual Studio, Codeblocks, Eclipse, and Xcode are examples of integrated development environments. And finally, the linker is a program that takes the object files generated by the compiler and combines them into one executable file. This might happen if you're using other libraries, or if you have multiple files in your program. Okay, now a bit about writing software and techniques to use for your programming assignments. There are different approaches to software development, to minimize mistakes made during development and to make it easier to modify and maintain software. The waterfall development methodology is a common, but not very good method for developing software. It includes a very linear development process, going from requirements to planning to programming to testing. What's wrong with this? In software development, requirements can change at any time. Following the waterfall method can make it hard to meet these changing requirements since it goes in a linear fashion. Software can take months or years to develop, and a waterfall method can encourage messy code if there isn't time taken to test regularly, reassess requirements, and learn from the progress made prior. Iterative development allows requirements to change over time and to build the product in increments. After each iteration, you can also reflect on what was learned for use in the next iteration. And the software itself should be complete at the end of each iteration. Not the feature complete final product, but the software should run and any features implemented should work. And there are other software development methodologies out there. It takes a lot of planning and structure to build maintainable, testable, expandable, and stable software. A lot of the software out there has already been written and now needs to be maintained and expanded upon. Well, what about your programs? You will have a week or two to work on programming assignments, so I have some tips on making that time productive and to keep you from getting stuck. Spending some time planning before you jump into the coding can help you understand what you're working on, to keep you from writing code that will be thrown out later, and to keep you on track so you're less likely to get stuck on implementation details. One. Read all of the requirements and make sure that you understand them. If you don't understand them, send me an email. 2. Sketch out a flowchart of how the program will run, including branches, loops, and what the user will need to input. Also break down the features into steps so you can implement them one at a time. 3. Program one of the features, not the entire program all at once. 4. Test that feature and make sure it works. It is easier to find bugs in a small program as you work your way up, than if you throw a bunch of code together and multiple things are broken. Keep implementing features and testing them until you're done. Then, test the entire program, clean up any code or the user interface, and turn in the assignment. Since you may not have a lot of programming experience yet, it can be very easy to make mistakes, and you might not have a lot of experience with debugging or diagnosing problems. Some more tips for working effectively are do write a little bit, save and test. Don't try to write the entire program all at once. Do back up your work after each feature or every few features. Don't forget to back up your work. Do read the compiler errors and try to interpret them or search online. Don't erase the entire program and start over when stuck. Do use debugging tools, breakpoints, and the watch window. Don't print a bunch of debug info to the screen for debugging. And remember to store your assignments somewhere accessible to yourself, so you can go back and reference them easily for subsequent assignments. Some options for backup and storage are bitbucket.org with your source control, Box or Dropbox, uploading your code to an FTP if you have a server, or just emailing the code to yourself. So what should you do if you get stuck? Can't figure out what's going wrong in your code? Can't figure out a compiler error? don't understand the requirements, or aren't sure how to implement something? Try checking your textbook, as it's a good reference material. Try making small changes and test it out a little bit at a time. Do a search online, especially for compiler errors, it can help you out. Make a second project to test a different way. Start small and build up. Take a break and come back to it with a clear head. Sketch it out. Or just email me. I am here to help you learn. Okay, that's it for the introduction. Hopefully that helped give you some context on the C++ language and programming, and you've picked up some tips for effective coding.